Ah, well, greetings and Sabbath greetings. Bear with me as I get a little bit more prepared. One of the problems with having a few weeks off is we kind of get out of routine. thankful to find the wire, the clip for my microphone. I've not clipped it on, put it in place. I'm thankful to find a place to come to, it's all new. Yet God is with us and it, it's such a comfort to know His presence, his peace of mind, it is splendor and wonder, it, it, it's not the, the same, people, people I know will try and say, oh I'm glad you've got a crutch to lean on, you've got something that's, you know, a psychological construct, something that's made up but it helps you live your life better or more enjoyably. And yet the, the truth of the gospel, the, the reality of my situation and the situation that's open to all people who would turn from their sins and believe is that this is life plus, this is more than we can possibly imagine. Think or do or share in, it's real. The, 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 even in the setting up and the sitting down, the momentary passing of the birds, you think, well, oh, so God has so organised the whole universe as to bring it together, so it, in the moment that you speak, decide to speak, it, 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 it kind of blesses you more than another person, you who are a wretched soul, a sinner, a, a broken human being. I, I, I'm getting to think that way, yeah. Not that it's on rails, not that it's, it's uh, prescribed or pre-done. Yet yeah, our God, the God, the maker and creator of the universe and all the things in it, the heavens and the earth, the author and finisher of our faith is abundantly able to provide for his children clips, wires, cameras, vehicles, all the stuff that the world follows after and yet in him and, and putting him first and seeking him first in that change of um, <coughs> relationship when we come into relationship in that renewal, that new birth is an essence of the kingdom, is an essence of heaven, is an essence of God's tangible perfection in your life. No, not the, I mean, something to aspire to, something to reach for, something to pursue, something to fight for, something to speak about, share, commune. And it's real. My testimony, but what I, what I speak about my experience of this life, of this change, of this renewal, of this rebirth, is it's complete and it's so total as to be taken from death to life, taken from dry bones to to a living, walking, communing following discipling relationship with, with the one who made it all, the humbling. He made this, I didn't, you didn't. Oh, we can tend the grass and, and, and plant the trees and all those kind of things we can take a human part in, but the sun shining and the rain falling and the, the birds and the, oh, where did they come from and how they, 
that, that's him and that's also true for the uh, bike this is the first time I've managed to come out I've got a, a new scooter a moped to which significantly significantly increases my range of ability to travel from my community and it's that's look at it as a blessing yeah there's been contests I bought the wrong one that got impounded and had to be sent back and I thank God for it I thank God for get, lifting my head from the pillow this morning, for the breath of the air that's around me, for the warmth, for the cicadas chirping in the background, for the egrets floating up and down the river that's before me. This is green pastures and still waters. And I'm mindful too of the, of the infrastructure and the enmity of this world with the people of God. So. I trust and step out in, in faith for God's glory. He <clears throat> is worthy of, of that kind of dedication. He's worthy of that and much more. And there have been people throughout the ages who have dedicated much more, who have done much more, who have professed and spoken in greater challenge and suffering and sickness and ardor. You know, just I, I get on a little electric bike and turn a thing and, and get here. I've got water. In my in my pack, I've got I've got the Bible that's printed. I've got cameras and phones and technologies and all manner of thing to help me in that. I'm in a, in a park that's cultured. I've got you know there's hospitals nearby. Should I get sick or run into danger? Should I be assailed? There are police and and, and security. What a blessing! What a blessing! Praise be and glory to God. Every mouthful, every raindrop, every snowflake, every leaf, every flower, every feather, every eye, ear, nose, every claw. It's a, a, a splendor, a wonder to consider and look at. And, and then, if we can, raise to that point we see the consistency we see the beauty we see the wonder and splendor of something that, that couldn't possibly be random as much time as you give it as much as you knock things together there is no beauty there is no awestruck wonder oh that's just an emotional response it's not because it's there and it is those things the heavens declare the majesty of my king and the firmament shows his handiwork there aren't many too many dark places to go in the world anymore but there's probably a lot more than we think of and some of them even close to where we are where we can really uh, see you know the splendor of the galaxies the milky way that we live in is a river running right across the top of the sky and the myriad of stars the moon and its sunlit path and the sun, you know, trillions and trillions of tons of fusing hydrogen. Not so far away that, that we're cold and devoid of life and the water that we depend upon is a solid mass and not so close that it all burns off and nothing can exist. Oh, well, that's, you're talking Goldilocks zone, what science talks of as the Goldilocks zone. But the more we discover, the more unlikely our position becomes, not less likely. Not, no, not, yeah, not less likely it becomes, not more likely. You've got to have the, the formation of the moon and that relationship in just the right order to get the ebb and flow of the tides. Well, it could be taller, and we could be taller and smaller. And, the conjecturists and the what if people look what we have and, and the consistency that you can find in God's word about such things is also good to know good to be a part of so I greet you in that today in the name of Jesus Christ Sabbath greetings to you 
and uh, uh, I continue on with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this day, for the beauty and the splendour, the wonders of your creation, the opportunity to come out on it, and the Sabbath day to put aside the things of the world, put aside the pressures of work and this and that and the other, uh, shopping and society and social media and all those other things. And yes, yes, Lord, I know that. Oh, fellowship with uh, New Zealand and England and India and Pakistan and America and Africa during the course of this day through those technologies Lord but I know that I'm not pursuing after worldly things movies and, and, and games and fantasies and pursuits that are distracted from the things of the kingdom I pray that I can be consistent in, in doing the things of the kingdom that you are in this message that you are in the birds and the trees that you, you, you populate this space and this time for your glory and namesake Amen Yes, and may you bless, Lord, the uh, people who, who see and listen and take the time out to receive, to search for a message, to look for a, a, a blessing, to, to find a way in this complicated and challenging society. It is complex, Lord. Amen. All made by God, of course. And, and through his word and through through a, a consistent seeking after his will and wisdom and glory is that we're told by that same word that we will grow in it grow in it and grow in it we will take it from glory to glory that our appreciation will not diminish it doesn't run out it's not that you reach a point, oh, well, I've done enough of that. I'll go maybe uh, do flower arranging. Or become a train spotter. But rather, the more you know and the more you find, the more it reveals God's splendor and glory, the more you're lifted and the more you want to know more. And to become like Jeremiah who said, you know, I, I eat up your word like honey. God's word is alive and powerful, sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword. It's not something we should cherry pick, and that's one of the themes of today's message. We'll start with a piece of we'll continue on with a piece of scripture. From the ends of the earth we have heard them sing, this is Isaiah twenty four, verse sixteen onwards. How lovely is righteousness. But I thought villainy, villainy. Woe to the traitors and their treachery. Traitors double died they are indeed. The hunters scare the pit and the trap. Threaten all who dwell in the land. If a man runs from the rattle of the scare, he will fall into the pit. If he climbs out of the pit, he will be caught in the trap. When the windows of heaven above are opened, the earth's foundations shake. The earth is utterly shattered, and it is convulsed and reels wildly. The earth reels to and fro like a drunken man, and sways like a watchman's shelter. The sins of men weigh heavy upon it, and it falls to rise no more. On that day the Lord will punish the host of heaven in heaven, and on earth the kings of the earth, herded together, close-packed, like prisoners in a dungeon, shut up in jail, after a long time they shall be punished. The moon shall grow pale, and the sun hide its face in shame, for the Lord of hosts has become king on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, and shows his glory before their elders. Wow. Wow. Uh, I've opened the Bible there in prayer, in thanksgiving, and God has supplied a message so pertinent, so perfect for what I've come to talk about today, what the message is about today, what, I, what I've been, what is, they say, put upon my heart to speak about. I, I, treachery, villainy. I, I, I believe that there are many people 
who are deceived in this world, who are faking their faith, they're faking their Christianity, they're faking their walk with God. That presence, that splendor is not apparent in their lives, yet they declare it anyway. Now there is challenge to those who do not, who have the kingdom, that the enemy comes against in deceit. Yet there's also a deceit of the people who in pride and vanity try and, and press like Simon the sorcerer. Try, oh, teach me how to, how to do those things, he said to Peter in the book of Acts. I'll give you money. And Peter said, may your money die with you. You can't buy these gifts of heaven. You can't fake it. You can't pretend it. They are real and they are tangible and they are excellent and they are beautiful and to put up some kind of falsehood in the hope of just oh, I'll just get by nobody will see that is that God sees every heart he knows every human being he, intimately he knows every hair counted every hair on the head the Bible says he, he just knits us together in the, in the in our mother's womb by him we are fearfully and wonderfully made do you think that we can really fool him do you think that we can really pass it off as a set of instructions that we follow, copying the people to the left and to the right and m mimicking and emulating what they do rather than the, the genuine, heartfelt, total surrender that's necessary to hand yourself over to say to the Lord, not my will but thine be done. Jesus called out, Simon Peter, I'm willing to die for you and he said, I'll tell you the truth, before the cock crows you'll have denied me three times. And the thing that I found myself trying to communicate to people, and something which I declare myself, if you are wrong, if I am wrong, do I want to know? Would I want to exist in comfort in a lie? Or would I want to have to face up and accept the changes necessary to bring me to the truth? To lay down the teachings of men, the, the things of this world, and, and, and to step, step away from them and say, I don't want to go back to those things. And, and to take up the true gospel of Jesus, the true good news of the kingdom of heaven, the way, the truth, and the life, the new life that we may serve him, that we may surrender ourselves fully and totally to his service, that the, the, the job I do is secondary, that the family that I have is secondary, that the material things that I have is tertiary, quadruply, you know, none of those things are important to me but the kingdom of heaven, but, but serving God, to hear those words when we enter heaven, when the day of judgment comes, Welcome home, my good and faithful servant. As opposed to the, 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 the abhorrent dread that would be the words, it's as if I ever knew you. How can I be recognized? How can I be known? and know fully as I am fully known I, I, and the way of love and the way of truth and the way of life the king of glory the action necessary I, I mean if you're in that place where you're now like, oh, I'm doubting like I'm not sure and maybe I am faking it that's what shows you care and that's what you need to press into, not press into less or press into the faking or joining in, but pressing into the genuine pursuit of a life in the kingdom, of a life, you know, until Christ's coming. And if it's now, sweet, blessed relief and release. <coughs> oh, I have responsibilities. Oh, I have things and goods and possessions. I want nothing to hinder me, my identity card. <laughs> yeah, I'm home.
Oh, do I fall short of the mark? Yeah, so I, I place that into your hands, Lord. I'm deserving of his wrath. Just one of my sins, not the myriad that, 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 that mark me, and yet there's still the same things that I, I pass over to the cross that I put in Jesus' hands in that moment of transition when I'm reborn. It's yours, Lord, past, present, and future. And although I transgress now, it hurts me, I know it grieves him, and I don't want to grieve his spirit, so I have to pursue him. I've got to set that aside, and the fear, and the doubt, and the sickness, the accusation. I must return, rebuke the devil and return that. It's not valid. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. I need to seek the cross. I need to get down on my knees. I need to say to the Lord, forgive me. I, I, I'm a sinner. And although you have blessed me more than I can know, I know there's no propitiation for those sins, that there's consequence I must face. Yeah, Lord, I acknowledge you and, and I'm, I'm desperate and I want to return to you. And I, I, my calling, my being, my hope, my life, my light is you and you alone. And in that, I will be satisfied. Your word declares that these things are true and I uphold and I cling and I fight and I stand and I lay down and I seek you as best I can in each and everything that I do from the lifting of my head to the laying down to the setting of the sun let the name of the Lord be praised let his name be on my lips let him be in my season let it be the salty season into my lifelong day but until you come until we know as we are fully known to yet pursue you to yet look for you to let hope in you to put down fear and sickness and shame that these things come yet you know, we don't cling on to them I'm speaking tomorrow in the uh, Foreign, the foreign fellowship here in my local community it's the local church it's their first uh, um, full session we've had a series of home groups uh, during the summer break and this is the first session since that we'll come together again and, and the, the topic that uh, I, was, I was given a choice of topics and yet themes and the one that spoke to me was homecoming and homecoming because a number of reasons for that you know our destination compass map light you know candle book the, the shield sword that the, 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 what we're given is that ability to what's my direction Jesus well, where does Jesus live? Jesus lives in heaven. So my direction is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And being transformed to glory is coming closer to the kingdom of heaven. And that's where we want to be. I go, Jesus said, I go ahead of you to prepare a place for you. In my father's house, in many rooms, he goes to prepare what some translations say is a mansion. Some translations say is a condominium. Some translations say is a room. Wherever it is and whatever it is, it will be in a place and a, it will be a space that, that's beyond our ability to imagine. You know, or you should know if you've heard of the messages that I preach, that, that, that I believe Jesus is building this city, this place where we will live. He's actually physically setting one stone on top of another, setting every Cornelian and Jasper in its right place, every crystal every part of it the, the the river that runs through will run and the streets that are paved with gold i think he's building the a lot the whole of that new jerusalem i go to prepare the place i take that as his word and it's one of the reasons we explain jesus that we can explain the time that it's taken that it is taken and it's something to look forward to this is a city uh, like no other we can read in the book of revelation kilometer over a kilometer in every direction and uh, you know it, 
even lampooned and mocked in some modern uh, uh, shows and series because that's what they try and do through the back of the hand mock God because it causes that wrong thinking and that wrong association when the truth is something that city is built and we will live in it in bodies that are transformed like Jesus is was before his ascension to heaven when he came and he said put your hand in the wounds on my side in the, in the holes of my hands the only body that will bear a scar in the kingdom of heaven in, the, in, in that place will be his because he has earned them because it's necessary and that's that body he's, he's transformed into we won't die in a car accident we raise in a body that's broken we'll be raised in, in, in that imperishable new body all the scars gone made new and it can translate into locked rooms cross spaces because it's God it's not bound by the physical laws by the biological laws of this body and yet it's still a physical tangible thing we'll still we'll never get hungry but we'll still sit at a table millions of miles long and eat we'll share, we'll sing, we'll praise, we'll worship, we'll look and see taste and see that the Lord is good he will walk with us in the new heavens and the new earth when all this is made new and the lion and the lamb lie down together we'll, we'll, we'll step into that life that true life eternal life incorruptible no poverty, no sickness, no shame with everything in its right order, right place and it, wonderful homecoming one of the dangers is we have those associations on earth that will actually bind us down come the day of his coming when our concerns are for the worldly things when we turn just as Peter did after he got out of the boat and joined Jesus in walking on water of a lake of a body, a deep body of water and Jesus had walked across the surface in a storm and appeared to the disciples and Peter gets out of the boat and joins him looking towards him, keeping that focus on him that, that the majesty and splendour of heaven, the reality of him as the Messiah as the one that had been written about and spoke about and hoped for and be believed in over generations over eons, millennia, until the point that here he is, here is Jesus standing on the water and he gets out and he's like, that's the fulfillment of everything I ever believed in, everything I ever wanted, it is so glorious and so wonderful, I left the fire on. All the nets are in the I can hear the cries of the, and, he, and, and he's distracted. And immediately it says he began to sink and, and, a, and a human being in a large body of water in a storm is a, is a, is a, a sad thing pathetic you can barely float but then the waves and the water when it gets rough it splashes you can't keep your head turned away it runs in your eyes your nose your ears slaps you in the face I've been slapped in the shallows of the sea There's no thing to grab onto, there's no place to stand. The only thing to do is that, it, that, that your clothes are wet, the burden of your waning strength, your frailty. And you, you, you slip under the waves. Yes, there are stories of people who've had miraculous estate, escapes. But far more are the stories of those that simply slip beneath the waves. And it was Christ who reached down, snatched him up and lifted him back into the boat and joined him in the boat. Wow. Praise the Lord and glory, hallelujah. That's what he did for me. A wretch, drowning, sinking, hopeless, lost, 
afraid, a, a seeker of truth and knowledge. Yes, but what, where did I look? Oh, I looked at Christianity as a subject. I looked at Judaism as a subject. I looked at Islam as a subject. I looked at Hinduism, Spiritism, Occultism. The Bible says I have nothing to do with some of these things. They're dangerous. and can go further. Praise be to God for prevenient grace, whether it's the prayer through the prayer of others, the people in my family or my community that, that pray, the few and far between. But thank God, praise God, that He heard their prayers and protected me from the things of the world and also the curious responsibility of someone that God knows is coming to Him and, and even may serve a purpose. It's not guaranteed. that predestination I think he can still be a, a pot in his hands that, he, that it's flawed well, keep you on your toes that keeps me on my toes I pray and yeah that provenient grace was there it brings me through and allows me to go through those things God, God does not violate our right to choose so we look and, and find and now I can testify I came across occult books by spiritual occult means not just like there's a set of books on the shelf but going through kind of, kind of spiritual I was reading at the time about Arthurian legends the Mabinogi on the things of the uh, Celtic traditions and that's it it came spiritual means and ways and journeys these things are real the Magi that predicted Jesus' birth that, 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 and, and visited him uh, and the significance of it all genuine and real in their uh, understanding and profession Cheers Shalom Ni hao Cheers Shalom 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 Heaven is my home. It's what marks us as different. It's what marks us as a people, a society, a community, a family. And that Jesus is preparing that place for us. That's why it's taking so long. It's a physical real-time act of love I mean it's necessary all the other things fit into that too the the march of time and territory that the fulfilling things of the kingdom need also come to pass and the preach from the the, the, the book of Daniel the Nebuchadnezzar's dream as I've shared on before the statue that's upright we need to come through the, all the things to the, the feet to the iron and to the feet of iron and clay and I preach that that's where we live now we can see what the iron and clay looks like that there are certain nations that, that are, are, are related to that iron to that Roman em Roman uh, Empire Roman teaching and that's been impressed into the clay of, of the other parts of the world and now we, we, when we we can see the impression of the one uh, of, of the hard on the soft and yet even though it's taken a very perfect form and beautiful it's surface deep and yet all it does is affirm that these two things will not cleave together and they cannot last I preach about the time of the coming of the white stone not shaped by human hands that, that <coughs> becomes a mountain and then that mountain covers the whole earth I believe that that is the church of Carpe Cruxis that's why I preach these messages I believe that time is now and that, that this is the trickle of water in Ezekiel 47 that comes over the step of the uh, I've come over the step of the temple and now through the gates and then through the gates it will become ankle deep but I believe that that transition will be quick now, praise and glory be to God for those new converts and new people that come into that understanding of true biblical authority and uh, working and living that it's portable and translatable and i'll be greeting 
people in India and Africa and China and Saudi Arabia and all the South America, North America, Europe, all the countries of the world, Europe, Australasia, you know, Greenland and uh, um, the Antarctic, wherever there are people on earth, that this message will be received and understood because the clarity of it will be, that any veil will be lifted by the Holy Spirit and people can understand compass, map. So I keep on to these things if I get to it, because the map tells me, 1 Corinthians 10, 13, that in whatever situation, no matter how I'm tempted, and I won't be tempted beyond my ability to bear it, that God can still hear my prayer and release me from it in that moment. I need to be back on track. I need to be following Jesus. I need to, I need to, all right, that's it. Good, 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 good. God, 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 God. Jesus, 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 Jesus. See, in the name of Jesus, darkness must flee. If we're proclaiming him throughout our walk, way and life, we will be pushing back and pressing back. And God will, uh, is good to show us because the unfortunate truth of that is, of course, is that the, the darkness will try and get in and swamp us and overwhelm us because this world is cursed. We are few, workers are few. Even as we grow in number, even as it, as, as it catapults, it'll be only that time when it becomes that mountain that covers the whole earth, will it really and truly be in a place that's much uh, easier for it to be. I can't say it will have the total overcoming because there'll be a thousand year reign, I believe, of that church, of that society, of that world. And then the Bible says after that thousand years, there'll be a time of tribulation. The devil will be released from his captivity for a time and Leviathan and, and all those other things and that terrible war and then the end will come. Christ will come for that church that's uh, uh, solid and uh, attacked and he will release it. He will be utterly victorious which is uh, one of the uh, only in the way only he can be utterly victorious and he will that those people will be lifted up. Those that remain faithful will be taken will all come to judgment and those that, that, that walk in true faith and true light will, will, will literally just walk past they won't face the judgment and there'll be those who are kind of I'll be judged and then in that judgment there'll be one of two uh, um, decrees Welcome home, my good and faithful servant, and enter into heaven, or it's as if I never knew you, and go down into the lake of fire. Follow after Satan until his destruction and doom. And this is where being deceived and faking your faith, faking the Holy Spirit, faking the words of God, faking, pretending, fantasizing, it won't cut it. You can fool your pastors, your preachers. You can join in with their foolishness if what they preach and say is not what the, king, what the Bible says, is not what the map and compass really relate to. I hear many church leaders preach off-center, offline on the gospel, which is why I chose, I, I called, I felt moved to, to found a church, co-found prayerfully. And, and that was something that had come with, the message of that church had come from before. And, 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 and that's the, the image, and the, as I've pressed into that, I've found out more. I've, and, I, and, I, and it has not caused me to turn away. I hear a message here pre of division is necessary within the church. That's not the message of the gospel. I hear that you know we can challenge this leadership and that authority. That's not the message of the gospel. In truth, in, in, in right truth, I pray and hope for that white stone unity in church, that reaching out to brothers and sisters because one of the last vestiges of our identity is our nationality, our home identity. Where is it? Where's your home? Well, I'm so uh, American, I'm Spanish, I'm Portuguese, I'm English, I'm French, I'm Welsh, I'm Indian, I'm, 
I am a citizen of heaven, a true Israelite. According to the scriptures, according to Christ's sacrifice and the way he opened, that we as Gentile believers can be grafted in to that family, into that heir, uh, lineage of Abraham. And they call, they say, oh, that's replacement of theology. It's the core of anti-Semitism. No, 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 no. My hope, Christ's hope, is that people turn from their sins, turn from their wicked ways and receive him, receive the truth, receive the gospel that he has made a way that we cannot be justified by the law, by our practices, by our living, whether we're uh, Muslim or Jew or Hindu or Sufi or Zoroastrianist or apologies if I missed anybody out atheist we cannot be justified we cannot rightly live until we accept Jesus and it will seem like foolishness it will seem like that's well that's wrong because it says that and yet it's the truth a step of faith is stepping past that reaction that human reaction that thing that you've been taught your whole life well you've accepted at some point in your life when you entered into the, the innocence to rebellion and started following after these things it might be that the fact that all your culture and society is that way but you know you're not satisfied you know there's no truth and I know I have confidence to say that because the Holy Spirit is so in each of what I'm talking about, what I'm, that relation, manifest relationship that's available to all, the seed of it, the kernel of it, it is already sown into you. Jesus said, I, can, I, will pour, uh, I must go away, the, uh, the comforter may come. The, the, the spirit of truth can be poured out, the spirit that used to hover above and over the earth and, and, and then came and would hover above certain people in the Old Testament, the prophets, David, Saul, uh, uh, Elijah, all of them, the Holy Spirit hovering, being in and over their lives and then entering in at certain times and then the, 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 the gift of God, the change, the universal change that Christ made when he went to the cross is that ability is now an internal thing which is why the communion shifted, the sacrifices shifted from the, the blood of lambs and goats and birds and grain offerings for sin and an atonement for all those things necessary, they're external to internal, the blood and the wine, the bread uh, the blood and the uh, bread, the, the wine and the bread that we partake in that communion, internal. Because internally we have been nourished as well. We have been sown with the Holy Spirit. So you know, that's what it will tell you in its very most basic, intrinsic state, what's right and what's wrong. You can deny it. There are people and criminals that, that, that become masterful in that denial. There are people and criminals who are not criminals who aren't incarcerated, who become masterful in that denial. Even worse, they might like, rise up and say, well, I'm not like that, but I'm going to I'm going to be denying anyway, and probably its worst manifestation are in those that claim that they've got the spirit, they've claimed they've got that growth, they've claimed they've got that renewal, that complete turning from what they were, like a 180 degree turn, I, needed, I was dead and now I'm alive, it's not a, a, just a, a box that I've ticked, it's something that I can actually testify uh, and stand in my testimony. Uh, it's intrinsic, it's so true that I cannot deny it, that that was my life before and this is my life now and they are completely different things and I can evidence it here, 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 there, 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 there and there. I don't pursue this for some vain comfort, for some crutch to lean on. It, it's, it's, it's a rock to cling to, this is a place to stand, a life to lead, a truth which is so far and above even that I possibly imagined when I first came. Because once you do come in truth and life, that spirit, that seed inside you will begin to grow and grow and grow until it reaches that point that it can't but help pour out. A brother in Christ shared yesterday a most beautiful image 
that God's love is like the Amazon River and he, and he pours that out to water a daisy. Me and you, weak, rubbish, pitiful. I mean, splendid in, in its own right as a thing. God's love is poured out in such abundance that even with the many holes, even with the many faults and failings, they can be overcome and overwhelmed and then like a tea bag. <laughs> Letting the flavour, letting the joy and the sense flood out. That should trouble come, should people try and jab and stifle, stymie. continues to pour out and, and, and what fashions us what, what keeps us, what gives us that hope is it the fact that God will come and punish bad people the next verse uh, chapter 25 of Isaiah is a song of thanksgiving. O Lord, thou art God, I will exalt thee and praise thy name. For thou hast accomplished a wonderful purpose, certain and sure, from of old. For thou hast turned cities into heaps of ruin and fortified towns into rubble. Every mansion in the cities is swept away, never to be rebuilt. For this is a cruel nation holds thee. For this a cruel nation holds thee in honour. The cities of ruthless nations fear thee. Truly that thou hast been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in his trouble, shelter from the tempest and shade from the heat. For the blast of the ruthless is like an icy storm, storm or a scorching drought. Thou subduest the roar of the foe, and the song of the ruthless dies away. From verse 6, on this mountain the Lord of hosts will prepare a banquet of rich fare for all the peoples, a banquet of wines, well matured, and richest fare, well matured wines, strain clear. On this mountain the Lord will swallow up that veil that shrouds all the peoples, and the pall thrown over all the nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from every face and remove the reproach of his people from the whole earth. The Lord has spoken. On that day, people will say, See, this is our God, for whom we have waited to deliver us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us rejoice and exult in his deliverance, for the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. But Moab shall be trampled under his feet, as straw is trampled into a midden. Bless the people. He will bless his children, the homecoming, the place of devotion and intention and destination is when he comes and we rise to be with him. We enter into that kingdom. We set aside this fleshly body and, and, and are restored and given a crown and a gown. We can let go of the armor, we can let go of the weapons of warfare, even this, this book, this word, will be written on our hearts. It'll be a remembered thing, but we won't need them physically because he will be amongst us. He will walk and talk with us physically, apparent to us. No need for a sun or a moon to shine light because he is light. We will be light. We'll be with him. And though we won't be the same as him because he is distinct and different, we'll know that. It'll be so obvious. And no mysteries, everything revealed. And an eternity, an eternity of dancing a quadrille, uh, of sharing with every human being that's ever lived it for his glory and namesake. Tens of millions, hundreds of millions, billions. Wow. Without time constraints without sickness or pain, suffering, distraction. Who are you? How did you come to know Jesus? It's 
relating that story over again and rejoicing and having people rejoice in your story in perfect relationship without oh I'm a bit tired now do tell us me more do tell me more I want to know and, and uh, yes I want to know Moses and, and, and Samson Jael weirds me out makes me feel quite strange humble joyful is that they will want to know our stories they'll want to know me what about when you did that and how did you do this and that we'll share because in the retelling of those stories over and over again like water running through the, the, the reed beds here Jesus, 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 Jesus. You can ask him. Here he is, walking amongst us. Did you really forgive me of all those? Yes. Did you really, you know, Samson really pushed all those things to colonnades? Yes. Wow. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus homecoming is not about the town you're from or even the place you live now I, I, I hear people who live in who lived in New Zealand say oh this is paradise and, and that some I, I was stirred to move, move to speak to but really to every one of them I say this as an opportunity it's not paradise heaven is, is something that's even beyond what we can imagine we can imagine well I've had a conversation last week with uh, a young man who's close. I believe in God, but I'm not going to step in. I won't make that commitment. And we talk. That's what we talk. It's what I'm called to proclaim is the things of heaven. It's the, again, the Holy Spirit will affirm within people the truth that God is who he says he is, that our intent and our destination is where he says it is. It's not something that's made up to comfort the poor or give hope to the sick or the travailed or troubled. It's real. And, and the evidence for that is in that life that we can live here on earth after our acceptance when we can step into the role of disciple, of servant, follower. And in that, there he is in the midst of us. There he is. In the breeze, in the sunlight, in the chirping of the birds, in the waving and bobbing of the daffodils, the lilies, the daisies, and that love is pouring out and pouring out and pouring out and pouring out. And if we rest in it and walk in it and learn to follow after and according to his will and ways, how much more abundantly will he do that? How much more abundantly? So that come fire or storm or sickness or famine or disease, yet I will remain, yet I will stand and I pray because I'm frail and I'm weak. I don't suffer. I'll never have to suffer like Christ suffered. But there's a, so there's a limit. Oh, I'm strong. There's a limit. Oh, I'm healthy. Oh, there's a limit. But even in the time when those things come, there's opportunity to say, there's a home I'm going to. There's a place where I'll share and be in the communion with all those people that are known in this life who are also going to go there forever. I'm thankful that my, my nana will not have to make me a cup of tea because that's not how it works. We'll sit and drink tea together again. I'm thankful for my brothers and sisters in Christ and the knowledge of them to know them more and to spend time with them and not have to peel off and go without the things of the day and way and work and struggle and strife. That even if we you know, took a, a year with those best of friends or a, a, a ten years 
It'll be nothing compared to the freedom given by eternity. Stop the clock. Nothing will ever change. Nothing will grow old. Nothing will fall away. Nothing will be laid down in the dust and disappear, never to rise again. Nothing. This is how it is forever. This is the company and fellowship of the saints. These are the children that died in childbirth. These are the, the old people that gave their lives in their last gasp and will all be of a right age and a right knowledge and a right understanding and a right relationship that continues that dance throughout time, throughout history because that history is his story and it will have changed in the blinking of an eye from this beautiful splendid yet corrupt world groaning under the weight of the transgressions groaning under the weight of sin suffering in, in all myriads of ways from sicknesses to pollution and disease cruelty, greed, selfishness to a, to a place that, that none of those things exist or matter not even the corruption and smell of the rotting vegetation or the turgid water everything made new everything beautiful and perfect supernaturally and even in that city I believe naturally walking into that room on that day with Christ Jesus the humble son of God into the space that he's prepared for us. Everything right, everything where it's supposed to be. A place that we'll love and yet we won't be able to, can't wait to leave, to run into that temple, to run into that place of worship, to lift up our arms and sing hallelujah glory glory God Almighty who is holy far above me who is worthy hallelujah I, 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 as I sit here just and you know the number of hymns that just rise up hallelujah Holy, holy, God almighty, great I am, who is worthy, none beside thee, hallelujah, the great I am, great I am, that's home, <coughs> that's, that's where I want to be, that's where I cry out, my heart cries, that's my destination, that's my, my hope, my truth, my life, my light, my peace, my joy, my satisfaction, my contentment, my, my entire being rests that the way to go, that the place to be, what I decree and declare to you is Jesus, to be in heaven with our Father reunited forever and the map, the guidebook, everything you need to know is right here in your hands. Oh, you can listen to preachers and listen to people that will proclaim these things. You can listen to me as I proclaim it. But the truth of it lies between you and him. And these things, so that's the, you know, north, left, right, up, up, down, left and right of it. <laughs> Glory to God. What is the depth, the width, the breadth of it? Wow. That's what you travel, that's the road we walk, we want this narrow path. We've got to get a, a sense of the cosmic splendour, the cosmic spiritual awful, with an E, wonder of it all. That terrible would be the day or the person that turns away from that and says, well, I'm not going to bother with you. There's a lake of fire and dust and ashes to go into. Okay. So I leave this message today with you. Homecoming. Keep your eyes on the prize. The real destination 
is not of this earth. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of the earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. May you be blessed in every way. May the Lord Jesus himself <clears throat> be with you and comfort you. May his Holy Spirit stir with inside you. May you consider the words, if you've not made a commitment, if you want to know more, in the book of last uh, book of the Bible, the, the book of Revelation, um, chapter 3 and verse 20, says something like this here I stand this is Jesus talking knocking at the door if anyone hears my voice and opens the door so if you want to know more and you've heard something in this message today it's not just come from me but your spirit has stirred to the spirit that works and I prayed for through to communicate through me then you can knock at the door and uh, Hears my voice and opens the door. You can open the door. It's been knocked out, sorry. You open the door. That's the door to your heart. I will come in, Jesus says, and sit down to supper with him and he with me. So you're going to share at that bench, at that place, at the table, that point in your life. God will, Jesus, God himself will come in. And to him who is victorious, I will grant a place on my throne. As I myself was victorious and sat down with my father on his throne. Here, you who have ears to hear what the Spirit says to the church is you can ask Jesus into your life right now no commitments no necessities other than he has declared it and he will enter your life and he will sit with you and eat with you and walk with you and reveal himself to you that's what he's declared if you've received that and in that knowledge of belief that you now have that it's real you want to make a commitment to christ that's where you need to pray a repentance prayer turn from your sins and receive christ into your life and if you've done that and you still feel a need to go further then enter his service enter his kingdom you must be baptized in water and the spirit get that baptism get into fellowship seek people of like mind who will under, who understand the gospels who will take you down into the water and who will join you in death with christ and that you may be lifted out of those waters a new heart a new life a new start a new beginning a new birth a new creation that you may walk and take up your pack and sword walk and take up the things of the kingdom and seek first the kingdom of God and, 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 and grow in truth, in life, in light as dry bones being given flesh and skin and life that they may too live. Live the joyful, wondrous, awesome, splendid, amazing, difficult, challenging, hard, brilliant life that God has in store for each of us to be grafted in to the true vine and to receive the things that he has had in store for us from the beginning. Be baptised. So, step at a time. Oh, you can skip to the end. But ask Jesus to reveal. Oh, I've no idea in my walkway and profession where that cut off. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be blessed. 
beyond your ability to measure have a new destination you're currently if you are not in the kingdom of heaven if you are not of that knowledge and certainty and profession you are heading for the lake of destruction you will receive what you deserve what we all deserve for our sinful natures if you are faking it if you're lying if you're uh, unfaithful all those things will weigh heavy upon you and if you have not acknowledged jesus as your lord and savior you will not be saved no amount of good living and uprightness can save you it's not about your works because he went down to the cross to do what was necessary it was the only way if there was another way it would have been done if it was a way of justification through works then the jewish people themselves would have received it they would have walked in it perfectly and uprightly and they would be fulfilled that part of the prophecy which pertains to that particular group of people they didn't they rejected christ when he came they crucified him and that opened the way for all other people's coming gods provision they could have received Jesus they could have had it all to themselves they didn't yes God knew that they would reject him Jesus knew that they would reject him he wept as he approached the city he knew what it meant for those people uh, and, and there's a fullness and a better place reserved for those original branches that have been cut off who come back to be regrafted into the original vine a special place a special love it's not anti-semitism it's pro-semitism that they can receive the fullness of god's blessing even to and above what the other people of the of the world receive the gentiles and the pagans because that was their birthright from the beginning from before and to have heard the word and understood the, the message of the gospel and to have embraced it and received it in the setting of the side of, of, of the old law of Mo, the, light, the rules of Moses of the Talmud of all those teachings of men and then the receipt of the true gospel and the true faith and the true good news that Jesus was the Messiah is the Messiah who fulfilled all the scriptures who rose again from the dead on the third day and 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 all the things that are put forward as profanity in, in his um, um, ministry and walk and way in the times of uh, um, the writing of the New Testament he fulfilled it all and it was right and what has been put forward is slander and slurry in order to keep people under their bond that people under their bondage if you can but receive it you can take that step of faith so much more is the celebration in heaven and rightly so because god is always right and he loved those people from the beginning and he'll join with a multitude of people from every tribe every nation every tongue who will kneel at the foot of the cross i said that you know we keep our eye on destination i can't change where i've come from and i celebrate and rejoice in that and i'm truthful about it but i don't give myself over to it yes i like going back to my hometown of southport i like the smell and the feel of, of the water of the just after the rain on the on the tiles of the pavements there I love the parks and the gardens and the architecture. I love the people. But oh, for the, all of them to receive Jesus and come to that place, because just going back there is not a place for me to settle or stay. It's not my home. Jesus said when his mother and his brothers turned up at the door of the place where he was sat amongst rabble, amongst publicans and sinners, he said, yeah, your mother and brothers are here. And he said, these are my mother these are my brothers even to that that love connection in family that blood connection it supersedes that the home that the place that our true family that the people we should really hold on to and uplift and stand with are the people of the kingdom our true family of heaven because we do that when we are strong those people around us those family members that jesus's mother the jesus's brothers will see and did see that change come over and accept the reality that they could be grafted in that they could join in not him join them they join him it's the direction of authority and it's all about jesus 
destination, glorification, wonder, brilliance. So may that be manifest in your life. If you've taken those steps, do seek fellowship and learning. Ask the Spirit if there's nobody else about, our comfort and guide. And yeah, if there's other people about, you should also be walking in the Spirit. As you walk into their room, seek first the Kingdom of God in everything you do. And, and, and come to know more. You can join us on carpecruxes.net. There are resources there. There's opportunities to give. There are many people who are suffering in this world. If you're in a place of relative comfort, if you're considering what your next new car is going to be, or whether to get a 72-inch TV to replace your 57-inch TV, or whatever it is, maybe... Well, if I can afford that, I can keep what I've got for another year and maybe pay the difference into the kingdom. Sow it into a church, into a fellowship. I don't know if giving somebody who's begging on the street with a can of lager in his hand a load of money is a really good thing to do. But I can certainly buy him a bag of groceries and shopping so he can eat healthy for a day and maybe just shake himself out of that alcoholic reverie into a place that he knows something that's better and higher and more beautiful than the one he lives in. Wow. In all things, I pray a move, a move of the Spirit. It's God's message that, that's important. I'm a, a person, fallible, frail, passing like a vapour in the wind. I still haven't responded to that, praise God. What's necessary is relationship with Him. And that's in visions, in signs, in wonders, in dreams, in moments of peace and clarity. May you be hear that still small voice, may your ears be open, may your eyes be open. May your life be open, your heart, to the possibility that there's something else, something glorious that's available to you. Yes, you. And me, even me, today. Not it's something I'm storing up. Yes, I've got a destination in place, but the sense of it still travels down and pierces me to sing and shout and praise him for who he is and what he's done in my life in the life of the world in the every good thing even if it's to our correction even if it's hard to embrace a rebuke or a telling off from the most high that it still becomes part of your testimony, it still reveals his glory and ultimately if it draws us closer to him we thank him for it even if the devil comes after us and at us we can thank and say Jesus I love you and thank you for this life that I may know that there is a king in heaven who I cling on to who, I, who draws me inexorably closer and closer and closer that I run into his courts and I'll spend, give, you know, I'll spend a better is one day in his courts than a thousand anywhere else. And I'll sing his praises. If I go down into the gates of Sheol, there he'll be with me. And the gates of hell will not prevail against me as long as I stand and walk with him to the best of my ability, knowing that each and every time that I fail, I must get up. Do not rejoice over me, my enemy, for when I fall, then I shall arise. His paths of righteousness, for his namesake, he causes me to walk there. And I thank him for it, and I beg that knowledge and understanding to come to you. Surrender, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Father God, I thank you for this time of sharing this opportunity. Thank you for the technology. I pray that not too much of the message was missed and the battery was changed. I love you, Lord, and I, and I pray in some way I communicated that to others. That it's not a crazy man's talk or a 
foolish man's rambling. It's a certainty that, 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 that I've received in my life, through your life. And I can say, in all honesty, it's all you. I cannot boast in any part of it, of anything of it, other than what you've done, are doing and will do. I pray for, for those close to me, my family, my wife, my children. I pray for those colleagues who find me abrupt and difficult. I pray for those in the church or those here listening who might find the message difficult and hard, who might be tempted to reject it. I pray for your kingdom to come upon the earth. I pray for that white stone to grow, to become a mountain and that mountain to grow until it covers the whole earth. As I wonder and rejoice in the truth of what a world would look like populated by people who think like Jesus. Oh, I know there'll be pockets of brackish water according to your word, but that the main thing in every direction, in every nation, in every country, in every place would be Christ first, Christ last. Christ to the left, Christ to the right, Christ above, Christ below, Christ before, Christ behind. That we can help each other and trust each other and build something. A steward this world in a way that would glorify you, that would make you desirous to come and retrieve us should in a thousand years that enemy rear his ugly head. pray against the devil and darkness in every situation I declare the name of Jesus in and through and over every situation every life here gathered and everyone who is prepared to listen and I uh, ask the Lord spirit and angels to move into any space that's created that it may be defended that it may be held for a time that that person may choose truly and rightly what the next step on their destination is to follow your guidance and your compass to open your map and look for the truth that tells us that you are real. I pray this in the name, above all names, the name of God's Son, Yeshua, Jesus, Isa, who is the Messiah, who is the Holy One spoken of in scriptures, who sits upon the throne of heaven. that the Father may be glorified and that his kingdom may come upon the earth through the power of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Just reading from First Sam, First Samuel twenty two about Doeg. I heard rec recently about how the Talmud likens Jesus to Doeg. An extra prayer. For my brothers and sisters in the Jewish faith. 
May Christ himself speak to you. May the Holy Spirit of God give you visions and dreams, words, knowledge, wisdom, discernment and truth that you may take your step back sideways to the right path. <coughs> the hidden name take. Amen. Join us in worship on 211.org if I've already said that. The resources on Carpe Cruxes.net, I've already said that. The um, pray to the Holy Spirit if you need guidance and hope to connect you and join you in that prayer that uh, he can and will put people in your path or on your path that you will uh, help steer you in the right direction that you may find fellowship and study and more and um, grow and come to those places of surrender and laying down which is your choice not something that's laid upon a, a rail May you be refreshed and transported. Mm -mm. May the ants not find too much to take. God be with you. Peace be with you. Glory to God. Love you forever. Amen. <laughs>